Technology and medicine are coming together in all new ways, but the future is uncertain. There have been vast changes over the past five years, but the next five will determine the collaborations and partnerships that will move medicine from reactive to proactive. The connectivity that will be created by the convergence of computers and health will truly alter the way knowledge, technology, and insights into the future revolutionize healthcare. You will see over the next five to 10 years, the most dramatic change in improving outcomes and reducing morbidity, mortality, and cost on par with what happened 100 years ago with the introduction of antibiotics and the introduction of anesthesia. It's going to be that dramatic in what you will see over the next 10 years. That's really trying to move the bar from reactive to proactive in the healthcare space um, for the benefit of patient outcomes. There are two reasons why I think um, Biopharma will get more interested in this. And it depends on whether you think uh, digital medicines and digital health are toys or threats to your business. And the market is definitely bifurcating along those lines. Some people think that they're toys, and some people think that they're threats and have a very sophisticated view about the space. And if you think that you're a threat, just like GM thought that you know, self-driving cars were a threat and spent a billion dollars on you know, a company the other day um, that's in the space, a tiny company in the space that does self-driving cars, some biopharma companies are going to look at this space and go, it's a threat, we don't have that DNA in our company, and we need to transform our entire company. Biopharma companies, the stakes are even higher than usual because they're really now trying to focus on uh, meeting industry needs that are not just based on what a payer wants to reimburse for, but actually what a patient really wants. And then when you couple that with the fact that many of these companies are developing treatments that are in kind of increasingly competitive spaces, they're looking for ways to differentiate themselves between other players and also meeting the needs of the market. And so I think that that, you know, begs the need for digital solutions. You know, right now, doctors write a prescription and for that medication, you're going to get this dose and you're going to get this dose and you're going to get the same dose. Why? Because everybody gets the same dose. We're all the same, right? No. And so what these sensors are going to do is, is literally allow you to titrate on, a, on an individual basis the dose and the interval that's appropriate for you as an individual. The one thing that we've learned in the software field and in the hardware field is that people don't modify their behavior, they expect the technology to modify to them. First and foremost, for those of us that are in the development side of technology, it's important to remember that the most important thing in a clinical relationship in the journey uh, towards health is that patient-physician relationship. So we cannot get in the way um, of that relationship. And so to me, and based on what I've heard, it's you know this technology, data, and devices need to empower physicians. Partners that, that understand this is what they need to do, uh, they may not know exactly how to do it, and that's why they're kind of seeking out for, for you know, help and, and assistance, and, and that's where we're, we really start to engage. People and culture are the two most important things I tend to find. Um, if you have those two things, there's always a way to work through the other stuff. Um, if those two things aren't aligned, the deal will break down in negotiations, and even if it makes it past that, it will break down at some point. We've got disparate data sets that really aren't connected. Um, I think in the next three years, we're going to see a, a connected marketplace for health data across uh, silos. We're going to see the ability to match and uh, de-identify data and then re-key that data. And I think that's going to be a profound acceleration for a lot of the constituents in the research community as well as in the, um, well, certainly the clinical trial environment. From the health tech perspective, I think it's still very young. I mean, nobody's more excited about digital health than I am. So um, do I think it's here to stay? Yes, you know, it's, it's here to stay. It will continue to get digitalized. Um, I think we'll see 
you know, we'll have to really watch and be focused on on outcomes to determine um, sort of value. This is, you know, proof in value will really, really be, you know, determined on are people getting healthier, are people, you know, preventing. The thing I'm actually most excited about with digital therapies in particular, uh, the ability to both gather enough data about patients directly um, in a privacy safe way, if you're doing it correctly, <laughs> Uh, and then target a digital medicine or digital therapy at the super responders to that therapy is much easier in that context than um, in a traditional therapeutic context. Innovation coming from the digital pioneers, Tesla, Omada, Foundation, etc., and Optum and, and United Healthcare, that innovation actually does impact the whole industry. It's really not just those pioneers who are then going to be changing the world and reaping the rewards. They will do that, but they will also spur innovation in other parts of the industry because the, the rest of the industry has to. Where will the future of digital medicine take us? Be part of the conversation at Digital Medicine Showcase in San Francisco.